What's the biggest number? No, really, I'm serious. And I don't mean infinity. I mean like an actual largest number you could write down. I promise there's a real answer. So come with me down this crazy rabbit hole because we're going all the way to the bottom. But first, today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analytics, programming, and AI. Brilliant is uniquely effective to help teach you difficult subjects from the ground up. Build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing. I really enjoyed their programming with Python course. With so many interactive examples, Brilliant makes it really fun to learn, with bite-sized lessons you can do every day, whenever you have time. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash codeparade, or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks, Brilliant. So back to the question. We need to set some kind of limit on how much space we're allowed to use to write down this number. But the exact size we choose won't really matter, because whatever technique we come up with should generalize if we want to use a different size. So just for fun, let's limit ourselves to the largest number that could fit in a single SMS text message. That's 160 characters, or 140 bytes. Yeah, I know, it's weird. For some reason, SMS is only 7 bits per character. Naively, we could just fill up the whole thing with 9s, and that gives us a number about 10 to the 160. So we'll add that to the leaderboard. But obviously, we can do better than that. I mean, I was able to write it on the leaderboard in way less space. If we include basic math symbols, we could instead make a power tower like this, which is already unfathomably large. But this might as well be zero compared to where we're going. I mean, while we're using math symbols, technically we could have a 9 followed by 159 factorials. That's definitely larger, but come on, that's still smaller than well-known numbers like Graham's number. In fact, couldn't we just write Graham's number? Or Graham's number to the power of Graham's number? Or Graham's number followed by as many factorials as we could fit? I guess, but if we can use Graham's number, what's stopping us from using any other large number you can think of? The problem is, we can't define our number off screen and then just write its name. That's cheating. Because really, that's using more symbols and bytes than the rules allow. It also wouldn't be fair to only write a definition of the number if there's no way to actually know its value. It's uncomputable. We should include all the necessary instructions to actually generate the number for it to count. Fine then, here's a Python program that would theoretically generate Graham's number if you had unlimited computing power, and it just fits into the 140 bytes. Okay fine, that seems fair to add to the leaderboard. But is Python really the best way to make a large number? Surely there's programming languages that are more compact, allowing more space to make even larger numbers. For example, here's a significantly smaller Graham's number program written in Haskell. But now there's another dilemma. If we can just pick any programming language, there could just be some obscure language that happens to have the exact function or number we need as part of the syntax. I mean, at some point, is it really any different than just writing down the name of the number? What should even count as a valid programming language? Where do we draw the line? Should Python even count? What about math symbols in general? That's kind of like a language. Okay, if we want to define numbers with programs, we need something as basic and universal as possible. Something so simple even aliens could decipher it. And there's a few candidates for that. The first is a Turing machine, which is an infinite tape with a set of states, rules, and starting conditions. The head reads the tape and then changes state, flips bits, and moves the tape. It's certainly better, but it still feels a bit clunky and artificial, and it's tricky to see how you'd encode a Turing machine into a message in a universal way. Luckily, there's an even better option, and that's Lambda Calculus. If you've never heard of it before, it's basically a programming language 
that only has one function, the lambda, plus parentheses and variables. That's it. Literally nothing else. No numbers, no data structures, no math, strings, loops, conditionals, anything. That's what makes it so universal. You define all those things yourself. Nothing is taken for granted. So how do you even define a number in a language that has no numbers? The most common way in lambda calculus is with something called church numerals. In that system, the number of times you apply a function represents the number. So not applying f at all is zero, applying f one time is one, applying it twice is two, and so on. To make loops and conditionals, you can use certain lambda expressions called the combinators. In fact, there's a whole alphabet of combinators from a to omega for all sorts of things you'd expect in a programming language. It can often be hard to follow what these lambda expressions do, but one cool way to help visualize them is with these lambda diagrams invented by John Trump. It's a really nice way to directly turn linear code into 2D images, and there's just something very satisfying about it. So here's yet again another program to make Graham's number, but this time as a lambda expression. It does take up quite a bit of space though, but we don't actually need this many symbols anymore. In fact, there is a natural extension to something called binary lambda calculus, or BLC, which uses different bit patterns to represent the symbols in a much more compact way. Using BLC, we can actually compress this down to only 15 bytes, and it can get really compressed. Here's another program that outputs a number even larger than Graham's number that's only 49 bits long. Yes, bits, not bytes. That would fit in only seven characters of a text message. That's great, we have a super compact and universal system to make really big numbers. So what's the answer? What's the biggest number? Well, unfortunately, it's impossible to know the exact number. I mean, it is out there somewhere, but even if we had unlimited computational power to check every possible bit pattern, there's still no way to algorithmically check if a lambda expression terminates or expands forever in a loop. It's the classic halting problem. But that doesn't mean we can't get close. Let's go back to some classic operators. Each one can be defined as repeating the previous operation that many times. For example, if we have a function which returns the next number, applying that repeatedly is just addition and applying addition repeatedly is just multiplication, and next is exponents, and that can be extended as far as we want. But since we're using a number here, that number could itself be an expression to determine which operation we want to do. So let's define this new expression where we plug in the same variable into the operator. This expression is often written as f omega. Yes, that omega is an infinite ordinal. But to be clear, there's nothing infinite about this function. It just grows faster than any finite number you could put here as x gets larger. So it's just a useful notation. Okay, but let's keep continuing the pattern. What would happen if we apply x applications of f omega? Well, obviously that's f omega plus one. And of course that could go on forever. And hey, what do you know? We have another number here. That could plug into itself, and continuing the notation, we now have omega plus omega, or two omega. And we could keep doing this to get three omega, four omega. Hey look, another number. Plug it into itself for omega omega, or omega squared. And as you can imagine, this process can continue for a long time. You can get omegas to the power of omegas, go past the transfinite omegas into the epsilons, you can run out of Greek letters and parametrize that. Let's just say it gets insane, and it's really, really hard to describe just how fast these functions grow and how large these numbers can get. So I think now we have all the tools we need to finally answer the question. What is the fastest growing, largest ordinal function we could fit into a text message? 
Well, the fastest one I could find that definitely fits is the Buckholes Ordinal. It's really hard to describe just how fast it grows, but it does have a nice tree-based construction, similar to the famous tree function, but it's much, much faster growing than that. Surprisingly, the Buckholes Ordinal function only takes 49 bytes at most, so there's still a ton of room to do way more to it. But what you have to understand is that when you get to this level of growth, it doesn't really matter what number you put here or how you construct it. It's not going to change its position on the leaderboard. Even if we apply it to itself that many times, we're only adding one to the ordinal. The next fastest growing ordinal will just completely dominate it, no matter what we do. So just for fun, let's plug in these numbers and call it a day. This number dominates almost any other well-known computable number, so I think I'm satisfied enough to end it here. A huge shout out to John Trump for all his help in researching this video. He pioneered a lot of the techniques I've used in this video, so big thanks for that. And before I go, don't forget to check out my game 4D Golf on Steam. It's actually on sale for a limited time right now. There's still been a steady stream of updates with new courses on the Steam Workshop, new languages, and a ton of overall improvements. And it really supports the channel. And thanks for watching.